sometimes you don't want a cupboard that's all full of drawers because you've got maybe big items, toolboxes, that sort of thing to store in them. But you may not be 100% certain what you're storing in there or what you're storing could change over time. The easiest way to accommodate that is with adjustable shelf pins. That would be these guys here. These come in a variety of different styles. This planar metal style one, there are others that have a much bigger bracket so they will do heavier loads. You can also get them in a range of different colours depending on what colour your cabinets are. Uh, Mission Brown used to be quite popular, less so these days for some unknown reason. Now you can see a range of different holes which are all the different well, positions that you can put the shelf pins into. This means you can adjust your shelf to whatever position the shelf pins can go into. There are a few different ways that you can do this. You could mark it out and manually drill, hope for the best. You can get accessories for things like the Fezzel track for their routers, which will give you an incremental uh, little pin that does it for you. There are CNC's that do it, multi drilling machines. For the home gamer, there's really only two options that won't break the bank. You can make your own jig or buy one like this Craig jig. If you make your own, you're most likely going to Get a piece of MDF or plywood or whatever and drill some holes that are fixed sort of pattern. That will work fine but you'll find quite quickly that those sort of jigs wear out uh, and the accuracy of the holes suffer quite greatly. Craig were kind enough to send out their shelf pin jig. It's this guy here and because I live in a metric country this is the five millimeter version. There are really only two shelf pin sizes. You've got five mil in most of the world and quarter inch, which America, Canada. You can find it in a few places in Australia, but they're mostly older uh, style furniture, no, less around here. And that size refers to the shaft of the shelf pin. So if you try and put a quarter inch into a five mil hole, it just won't fit. And the reverse, well, this will just fall out. The difference between the quarter inch and five mil version of this jig is really just this drill bit here. The guide bushings don't need to be changed out and the indexing pin is five mil on one end and quarter inch on the other. Take a closer look at the jig, we've got the indexing pin which goes in there. It's got five mil on one end, quarter inch everywhere else. These guide bushings are for quarter inch bits but it might be hard to see but this has sort of got a step on it. So it will fit into these uh, steel bushings with very little slop and still drill the five mil hole. On the back side we can see the fence there. This can be unclipped and put on the other side. You can see that just affects the distance the shelf pin holes are from the edge of our cabinet. If I'm being honest I don't really know why you'd want one over the other so I've just gone for the further back one as it makes a bit more sense to me. Also on the back we've got storage for the drill bit and for the indexing pin goes like that and that's also how you set the position of the stop collar. The position of the holes on this shelf are somewhat arbitrary. A good rule of thumb is you don't need shelf pins right at the top or right at the bottom because you're not really going to put a shelf that's leaves you with maybe an inch or so. So I've already done one side, now I need to make it symmetrical with the other. I get my jig butted up against the end of the cabinet, come back with a cordless drill and based on the other side I'm just doing the bottom one to start off with. And that gives us the perfect depth because we've got that stop collar there. So to continue the holes I've got the 5mm step that goes through there. push that into the existing hole and that's indexed the jig so that I can keep drilling down and I know that it'll be the same all the way around. You technically don't have to clamp this and you could use an F clamp or something like that but I've found that it makes it a lot quicker and the results are a little bit less tear out because uh, guide bushings go all the way. So for this so for this cabinet, because I'm not having it in a kitchen, I don't need a huge range of adjustability, I'm just going every second hole down.
And it really is just as easy as that for adjustable shelves. This is just an old piece of melanin I had laying around. What I'll probably do is strip off the edge banding, reband it because it's perfectly fine for a shelf. That's nice and rock solid. It's not going anywhere. If this is your first time here. Don't forget to check out my second channel where I've just released episode four of the Australian Woodworkers on YouTube Spotlight, highlighting other Australian makers in the YouTube community. And don't forget it on Sunday night, I'll be releasing the video on how to make and install drawers for these cabinets. Thanks for watching.